Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How y'all doing this evening? It's Coffee Time with John and Mama. I'm John, and this is Mama. And it is cold here in East Tennessee. It's just 45 degrees. It's 6 o'clock, and it's been cold. And I think this is Easter winter. Or not Easter winter. There's Easter, Easter squall. squall. I think this is Dogwood winter. I really do. I'm no expert on the winters, but I've seen some dogwood blooms today, and that's usually what you go by. If it's redbuds blooming, it's redbud winter. If it's blackberries, it's blackberry winter. If it's east, I want to keep calling dogwoods Easter because that's what I think about when I think about dogwoods. If it's, uh, what's wrong with the potato? If it is uh, dogwoods, then it's dogwood winter. That's just the way that we call it. So, we're cooking up a storm. <laughs> we are having, I'm gonna cut these medium size because I like them big, but I want them cooked. I'm cutting up some potatoes. These are just Irish potatoes, regular potatoes, potatoes you may mash, whatever. And what we're having is um, beef stew. Good old fashioned homemade beef stew. We had that little bit of beef left. Didn't want to waste it. And why waste it when you have wonderful beef stew? And why not have beef stew when it's 40 degrees outside? It's 40. The temperature's just been dropping all evening, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's just cold. And I'm freezing. And we used to have 70s. I remember it was just like last week. Yeah. Just like yesterday. Well, it's going to be that next week starting out 70. Just like yesterday, it was 70. You know why? Because it was. But that's East Tennessee. What are y'all up to? I see no comment. We may be on here by ourselves, Mama. We might be. Anybody out there? No. Comments? No. Comments? I see no comments. Okay. Well, maybe we're not all alone. I see a number up there. What's the number for? That's how many people I think sound here by that eyeball. <laughs> but how come I don't have comments? Don't tell me we're going to go through this tonight. Are we going to go through this tonight, people? What are y'all thinking? Are y'all thinking? It's that we're on? We're stuck. I think we're stuck. <gasps> Bonnie, thank you for showing up. Hey, from Virginia. Hey, Stephen White, how are you? Hi, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. You don't know how good it is to see you, <laughs> We was here all along. We had no comments. And I thought, well, we're, it's messed up again. Okay. Woo! Now I'm feeling better. Okay. I thought, here we are all by ourselves, and nobody's here. Okay. So we're doing beef stew, and I'm cutting these potatoes up in case we was all by ourselves for a go. I don't know. And we're getting these cut up, and we're going to have some good beef stew, because it's cold here. It is cold. Um, but we're probably going to have to turn up the fire and lock the log tonight, because it is cold. Maggie will not be a happy little schnauzer. She lays in front of the fireplace, whether it's on or not. She's, there's a little bit of, it's a gas fireplace, so there's a little bit of heat comes from the pallet light. And she's like, sorry about that. She's like, I'm going to get all the heat I can get a hold of. <laughs> Are we froze? I hope it's not a bad internet night. I really hope it's not. I hope so too. We'll cut it short, short if it is. Are we having a bad internet night? Let's see here. Hold on and see if I can do one little thing here. I don't know. Nope. Y'all are froze again. It's Bradford Pear Winter. Oh, Mark, I didn't know about that one. But it makes sense because they're blooming. Yeah, we're blooming. Are we back? What is going on? Folks, I apologize. Something is not exactly. Anything. There's no movement on the screen. It's like we're by ourselves. Okay, I apologize, surely. We're moving again. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, let's get down to business. 
Folks, I don't know at this point if y'all seen a thing or not. And the folks that are on here, they're like, would he quit repeating himself? He's trying to be nuts. We're having a big stew tonight, and I'm doing potatoes. Quick version. Okay. Woo. Life is real, and real is life, and here we are living it. Living. All right, it looks like we got a number up there. It looks like y'all are moving. Woo, I think we're back to normal. All right, I am cutting up these potatoes. We're going to cut up these big carrots. These are not baby carrots. I like my carrots and the potatoes a little bigger than probably what I'll do them tonight. But I want them to be done. I want them to be good and soft, so I'll cut them a little smaller. Mama, what kind of uh, meat you got? You got that mm -hmm. roast from... Yeah. What's the oven on for? I'm going to make a little corn, call it cornbread. Anyway. It's a cornbread night, folks. Ding, ding, ding. We got the golden ticket. Oh, wow. I love a cornbread night. I am in the mood for some onion cornbread. I seen it the other night on one of our video up redos when I was going through Coffee Time page. And I thought, you know, I've not had any good Vidalia onion cornbread in a while. I couldn't find no Vidalia onions. But you can make it a little different than what we made it before when we just sliced them and put them on the bottom. Um, you can put them in it. That gives you a little bit more oniony flavor in that cornbread. Uh, what's this say? So apparently, y'all, you are such a shrewd. Heel Billy girl from Ohio here. So appreciate it. Well, Rena, we're glad to have you. Clear on my end. Good, Alyssa. I'm glad. It may have just been a bobble, but y'all were gone. And I couldn't tell that we were even live, except we did have the live up here. But I couldn't really see any movement or anything. I thought, well, they're style, it's styled. So it may have been going the whole time. And y'all think, well, he's just acting crazy tonight. But you next mom, that wasn't doing a thing. Here was it. No, it's frozen up. We didn't think, we thought Chance was gone. Now that you went and gone fishing or nothing, because, whoo, it's too cold here. Are y'all having cold weather? Somebody had posted yesterday uh, from out west how cold it was, and I said, we'll probably end up with that, because some of our weather comes that way, and you were not joking. Um, you know, 40, isn't it funny how temperatures are? 40 in the winter is a good warm day, and you think, ooh, we got up to 40 today, but it's nice. I went outside and, you know, if it's been 70 for a week and then it hits on 40, you're like, oh, it's so cold. <laughs> it's funny, you know, people will, if the house gets down to 68, 69 in the winter, you think you're going to freeze to death. But in the summer, you turn that air conditioner and you think, oh, it's hot. It's going to turn that air conditioner down to 68 now. Cold in North Georgia. Kathy, is it cold? Um, I'm not a fan of beef stew and pot roast. My mama would get so upset. She said, you eat, you eat veggie soup, my fella. Lynn, you don't like the, the pot roast? Um, a lot of people are not a fan of, of anything soup-wise or in a bowl. A lot of people <clears throat> want... You know, they don't want their food to touch. I have a, a, one of my really good friends. Don't like anything chunky. Vegetable soup, beef, none of that. He, no. No, that would not be anything he'd want to eat. Um, some people it is a textural thing. And some people, they just don't like all that mixed up. A lot of people don't like casseroles for that reason. Because it's all mixed up stuff. But um, most of the time, you know, you can... Most of the time you can satisfy a bunch of people with a soup or a pot roast or something. I think that's one reason they're popular in the South is because a lot of times they were made out of leftover stuff. You know, you might have leftover veggies, leftover, and you think, well, it's time to make a pot of soup. And uh, I think a lot of people in the South, that's the reason parents, grandparents back in their day, soup was a big deal. You had pinto beans, you had soup. Um, there's there's a little riddle and it talks about uh, peas porridge hot peas porridge cold peas porridge three days old. Oh, that was a true statement. A lot of people they would just dump all their leftovers in a pot and they'd be on the grate 
and they would eat till it was gone if it was two, three, four days, and it would get cold when the fire went out. They'd build a fire under it and heat it back up, and they'd eat it. So that little riddle, peace porch hot, peace porch cold, peace porch is it eight days old or something like that? Three days. Old. Uh, three days, eight days, several days old. It that was the true statement for the times, um, because you know. So many people were starving and didn't have food. And if you didn't prepare well, or if it was your first winter, maybe in an area that wasn't settled, you couldn't run to the grocery store. So it wasn't uncommon to have peace porch, hot peace porch coat. Um, I don't remember the exact riddle, but I think it's something like that. Some of y'all probably can't enlighten me. Uh, have I missed anything? Susan, no, you've not missed nothing. Just us trying to get started. You've not, in fact, some of these people could tell you he said it three times or four. He, he really ain't missed nothing because we, I, the, it wasn't looking like y'all were here, but the number was up there, but it didn't look like y'all were here, but now it does. So we're, we're, we're cooking good now. We're in the high mode. Here, let me put that. Yes, ma'am. That's the two medium uh, onions. That's one. You didn't cook that one. Oh, well, here, Mom, I'll fix it. I'll clean it up. I thought that was David. Well, you talk about trying to get out of work. Say you cut it and it's Mama, I didn't think you'd be able to see that way. <laughs> I did see it. Oh, I'm giving Mama a hard time. Giving her a hard time. Well, I'm going to make some coleslaw. Not coleslaw. I, st <laughs> <laughs> I thought coleslaw. <laughs> Start all over. Take two or twenty-two. What number are we on? <laughs> We've messed up all the way around tonight, folks. She's making coleslaw here. <laughs> Some cornbread to eat with. This. Cornbread. This a cup of meal, and I'm gonna put a little bit of flour. And get this on so it'll bake. <laughs> you gonna put some of these things in your cornbread? No. No, she's just wasn't plain cornbread. You know why? Because we ain't had any plain cornbread. The last that we had was that little dab I fried. And we we used to eat cornbread quite often, but we've really cut back on it. We've cut back on all breads. For the most part, haven't we, Mama? I thought we'd done pretty good cutting back on it. Yeah. We don't make biscuits, but once ever, once in a while now. We did have some wampum biscuits the other day. I'm buying some more today. You want to show them what you bought? We found a new wampum biscuit we like. But now I don't know if I like it for breakfast. To be honest. See, Mama? See, she ran off and left y'all hanging. I can't get my stuff together if I don't run off. I don't know that I like these for breakfast, but they're honey butter biscuits. And they taste remark They taste a lot like a roll. And they're delicious. Uh, so they were store brand, weren't they? Well, uh, whatever. Save you got them up there behind you? Yeah. Don't let me All right, I'll watch it. Well, stop it if you stop this watch. Don't watch it, Ro. Just stop it. Uh, these are store brand. Oh, they are. These are store brand. And they are flaky honey butter jumbos. So if you have something similar to that in your store, whether it's another brand or whatever, I'm sure if the store brand's got it, the brand name's got it too, but this is what we have. But that biscuit is kind of like a roll, ain't it, Mama? Yeah, it's good. Be good with molasses or syrup. Or and I'll tell you something else that I noticed about these. We fix out, you know, you don't have no choice with biscuits. You make them all or you throw them out. Somebody says you can save them, but I ain't never tried them. But we, we made all of them and we didn't eat them. And we put them in a Tupperware bowl and left them here on the counter, which is what we do, and that's what you do in the South. You know, I've been to people's houses my whole life, and I always knew there'd be either a plate with a dish towel over it or something, a biscuit somewhere. We just always had biscuits on the counter or on the stove. Um, and they were always delicious, by the way. But uh, anyhow, back to what I was talking about. They stayed really soft in just like a roll, and all you have to do is heat them in the microwave just a second, about five, about five 
seconds or 10. What did you put yours in there for, Mom? I think about five or 10 seconds. Five or 10 seconds. And they were delicious. And they stayed really soft for days, didn't yeah. they, Mom? Mm -hmm. Now, we're not sponsored by these people. Let this is take them in so they can be cooking. This is just a uh, product review uh, for you and for me. This ain't got nothing to do with the store or the product. Um, but they're good and they're soft and they just tasted really good. Just came on. How are you both this evening? Betty Wells, we're doing well. Um, the Lord has blessed us with good health ever since we had that battle with COVID. We both felt good. And, uh, it took a while. But we have recuperated really well, and uh, we're doing really well, and we're thankful. Now, I'm just cutting these. I'm going to punch you down here and let you see. Hello, John and Mama. Hey, Maggie. Hey. Hello, everybody. I'm going to punch you down here. So I'm just cutting these carrots. I'm not cutting them real tiny, and I'm not cutting them real big. Just cutting them on an angle here. Um, I like to taste a carrot in a beef soup. Now, if I'm making a soup, I'll make them bite size. But when I'm making a beef stew, I want that carrot to be real. I want to taste it. I want, when I bite into it, I want to know that I'm biting into carrot. When I bite into potato, I want to know I'm biting into potato. I'm so big, I'll never get them cooked. <laughs> soup, you kind of cut that stuff up smaller because you're blending that into one meal to me. When you're doing a pot roast like this, a beef roast, I want beef. it to be, beef stew is what it is. I want stew to be pieces of, of stuff cooked together that I can taste individually. I want, if I'm in looking in my bowl of beef stew, I want to pick out a carrot and taste that carrot. I want to pick out a potato and taste that potato. So normally I might just cut these maybe even that big. Woo. I want a good pot roast, we would. Pot roast or even a big stew. Now, Mama wants them cut up a little smaller. We usually compromise, and tonight's a compromise. I'm not cutting these big at all for me. And now they are. You taking that one, too? This is the cornbread. Y'all have seen Mama make cornbread before. And we just make it up, put an egg in it. Put, she put, we usually put it the same, we usually use a, a, Mama likes hers thinner, so she usually uses one cup of cornmeal, I'll use two or one and a half, and I'll put two eggs in mine, she puts one in hers, but she only uses one cup of cornmeal, and then we do it with buttermilk, and you can always add a little water if your buttermilk's really thick, or if you don't think it's the right consistency. Uh, I know how to make the two ingredients. Two ingredient one, I can't. The two ingredient biscuits that we made the other night, is that what you're talking about? We do have the two ingredient ones. Uh, those were good the night we made them. So I'm saying fresh and hot, they're great. But now I did have some of those left over and we put them in a bowl and I didn't care for them the next day. They were a little tougher, a little harder. John, tell people again, you don't have to buy stars to comment. You don't have to buy stars to do anything on this page. Uh, do not think you have to buy a star to comment. Do not, some, one person said the other night that I don't see you if you don't buy stars. You, I see whatever comments come up, but people, I see three comments and they roll up just like this. So I try to read them, but they are fast. And if there's, anything else on there pinned or anything then it is even less comments so i don't ever mean to hurt anybody's feelings i don't ever mean to slide anybody and i don't care if you did comment 12 times i just didn't see it we just didn't see it mama definitely didn't see it because she don't see that little fine print but uh i read back over them and people say i'm trying you won't answer me i don't mean to slide anybody love beef stew Catherine. i do too I like any of the, I call them comfort foods, the warm comfort foods of winter or fall. And you know, as soon as the first cold day of fall, using late September, early, I want homemade pot of chili. Uh, that's just our little comfort, comfort song. Uh, when is the cook-along? Cook-along will be tomorrow at 6 o'clock, and we're fixing to 
macaroni salad. Mama's using elbow macaroni. You'll need a couple. Someone asked about how many eggs. Mama? Well, according to how much you make, how many you feed your family with. According to how much you make. Mama will probably make enough. She'll use three or four eggs tomorrow. Uh, but she'll make a small amount. If you're going to use like a whole box of macaroni and you're going to use, you're going to probably need six eggs to make it good and eggy. But Mama's going to make probably a half a box of elbow macaroni and she will use about, about a half a cup of mayonnaise and uh, she'll probably put four, four eggs in it, five eggs, if she thinks it needs another egg. A dash of salt, a little bit of pickle relish and uh, well, my mustard, the dab of mustard. Uh, but now see, potato salad, macaroni salad, even cornbread, everything you make depends on how much you're wanting. So we may tell you a cup of cornmeal and an egg, and but that's for a smaller amount. Um, but you, you can, it's probably easier if you're going to make changes to a recipe to either double it or half in it or triple it. You know, you don't, it's harder just to add a little bit more you know, do you put another egg if you had just a little bit more cornmeal? Probably not. That in here, in I think so, Mama. I'll let you judge it. Now this is a hot skillet with a, just enough oil in it to cover the bottom. And this is the cornmeal. It's about right. It's ribbony. Now this is what they call a ribbon. Watch it come off that spoon, flat, and then it comes right on down. So that's a good ribbony cornmeal. So I want to let you watch this go in here and watch it sizzle. Hear it sizzle? Uh, now, some people would say, oh, you don't have to have a preheated skillet. We always have. And it starts cooking as soon as you put it in there. That cornmeal never really touches the edge of the skillet. Because the time that oil's in there, it kind of goes in and it's cooking before it ever gets up the sides. And it makes it so good. I think it froze y'all. Homemade vegetable soup and crusty bread. Gene, I love crusty bread with homemade vegetable soup. Uh, sometimes I cheat. Why was something burning? I guess not. This is a hot oil. Sometimes I cheat and use croutons, uh, and I make my own homemade croutons a lot of time, but sometimes I just toast bread, put a little butter on it, put a little lemon pepper on it, bake it in the oven, get it out, let it cool, chop it up, and if I'm doing it with soup or something, I'll make longer pieces. If I'm not doing it with soup, then I'm going to do like a salad. Of course, I just cut them in little squares like regular cornbread, or regular croutons. Does Mama add better than beef bouillon in her stew. Uh, Jan, she, do you, Mom? No. I, what I do, I show them. I do. Right here, if you can get it in here. That is my gravy that I had on my, my pot, I'm on my beef roast. When I fix the roast, and it brown and I don't put nothing in it. I just make my gravy off of the broth. And that's what I've used. I've had a lot more water to it, but it's just my gravy that I put in it. I had to the dinner. That's what we had Sunday. Here you go, Mama. Here's the... I have a spoon right here. Oh, okay. That's going to do it up. So here is the, you can see where we put the carrots. And those onions are already iridescent, they're already clear. And that's just the, now I can't, if you're making, I guess I should qualify. If you're making this from leftover beef and leftover gravy, you probably don't need the bouillon because uh, the gravy will have salt and all that in it. But if I'm making just a fresh pot, didn't have any leftovers kind of thing, then I will put big bouillon in it because I well, think if it, I used it that way, I'd, you'd have to help me. Now Mama's giving in and since she would too. Uh, <clears throat> we used to use, um, all the time, uh, what was it called, bouquet? Kitchen bouquet. Kitchen bouquet. And it just gives that stew a rich, dark flavor. It's a caramel. It's a caramel -like color. And, and um, I couldn't really tell much difference, but the taste on it wasn't salty or anything. And that's one reason we used it. 
is because it didn't add any salt. It just added that darker, richer looking coloring. But uh, the better than bullion in the jar, it will add flavor, it'll add coloring. I love it. And usually I just start out with it, with coffee, water, and, and uh, beef bouillon. But today's a little different. We're making it from leftover beef gravy that we had, and we're making it from leftover beef. So we didn't brown the beef today. And uh, <clears throat> so if we had it, it would have been a little different. We probably would have used that. I bought myself a very small, number three, cast iron skillet online. Okay. Uh, it's old. That's even better. I do not know yet if it if it'll make a pound of cornbread. Well, Susan, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, Susan cooks just in the morning when you get up. You take that skillet, unless it's really shiny and really you can tell when you bought a good cornbread skillet. Bake, uh, cook you some uh, bacon in it. Uh, the best way to season any skillet you buy is to cook in it, and uh, protein fats are the best thing to season it with. You, I don't recommend you season skillets and stuff with olive oil or uh, some low smoke point oil of any kind because anything that will, anything that tends to go rancid like uh, vegetable oil or olive oil is not really what you want to use to season with because what you're doing is you're cooking that and that skillet is going to absorb that, um, that uh, oil. So protein oils, protein fats, they don't go rancid like olive oil. You can leave uh, bacon grease on next to your stove. We've done it for, mom's done it for 56 years or so, uh, and it's not killed us. So bacon is the best thing to cook that we use to season ours. And if we get something that starts sticking, we wash it real good. We season it again with some good bacon grease. And if you don't want to cook bacon, and you have bacon grease, you can always put put you some bacon grease in there, put it in the oven. Every time you turn your oven on, throw that skillet in there with a little bit of bacon grease on it, and it'll season right up, and before you know it, you will be able to make cornbread in it. Which is better, bullion or better than bullion? Teresa, I like better than bullion, but I think I like it because it's already, um, soft and I don't have to like take it to you know, put the hard little thing in there. Now I have some uh, bullion I get from the Amish country and it's already soft. You can mash them up and they're just sort of a thick paste almost. Those I like but the standard ones you buy in the store they're a little harder. I like the better than bullion flavoring better and then you can also you can control it better. You would need a little bit more. You don't have to use a whole cube. You can just put a little bit more. Uh, so I tend to like, I use the better bullion chicken and the better bullion than, than beef. beef. <clears throat> Kathy says, hello, mama. Uh, hello. Hi, Miss Wanda. Hello from Laurel, Mississippi. Wanda, y'all cold down there? Hey, Karen Brown. Are y'all having an amazing Friday? It's Friday. It's Friday night coffee break. Isn't that wonderful? Chillicote, yeah. Tennessee. Kim Gardner. Is that where, is that where we're from? It says, let's see. What, is that somebody asking a question? I love East Tennessee. I thought you were in Georgia. No, nope, we're not in Georgia. Now, the Etsy stuff comes from Georgia. Miss Teresa, <clears throat> they're a really wonderful family. We love working with them. Uh, it's been a pleasure all the way. And they take care of all the Etsy stuff, and they make the Etsy stuff, and they pack the Etsy stuff. Uh, it's wonderful. Um, we do have that sale going on for St. Patrick's Day all month long. Lucky 10, the number 10, one zero. And you can get any, this size tumbler, any color of your choice, and an apron, any color of your choice for $35. Or you can get the coffee cup, same thing, any color, any color apron, for $30. And that's through uh, <clears throat> the end of the month. Now that's a bundle. This bundle and this bundle. And those are 30 and 35. Everything else but the bundles are on discount 10% with the code LUCKY10. And you can do that when you're checking out. L-U-C-K-Y-10, capital letters. 
and one and a zero, not T N. So that is for the Georgia part of our money coming in. My mom always said the same thing about seasoning the skillets. Yes, Dusty. That's what you that's what you gotta have. Miss Dusty? I think, uh, Dusty, are you from Delaware Terry? Is that the same? I was speaking to somebody out here one day and they said, I'm not from there. I thought you got the same <laughs> name as people from here. Um, anyway, Becky, we are cooking beef stew tonight from our leftover roast beef. This will be the third meal out of that roast. I'm telling you, prices are so high, you have to get all you can get and stretch it as far as you can stretch it. Pork chops and mashed potatoes. D, I love that. Pork chops is one of my favorite meals. I would comment, but I know you never see any of my comments. Well, Loretta Cook, I bet you're wrong now. <laughs> Hello, Miss Loretta Cook. Thank you for being on here. And we did see that comment right then. Hey, Rachel Jordan, how are you? Hello from Dalton Beach, Florida. I ordered my Tupperware bows and can't wait to get them. Well, Bridget, I hope they get there soon. Uh, you can use Lipton gravy packs. Uh, they have a different... Yes, we use some gravy packs sometimes. We used to live in Clarksville, Tennessee. We loved it there. Well, thank you, Angela Britt. She says she likes my shirt. Hello, John and Mama from McCullough, Alabama. We love Alabama. Mama's mama's from Alabama. Hello, John and Mama. Stu sounds great. It does here for sure. Okay, it's gone down another degree since we started talking. I think we're going to be plummeting down. We had freeze warnings for this weekend. My mama was from uh, Decatur, Alabama. Decatur, before she Alabama. was born, Dad, in Decatur, Alabama. Uh, Decatur, Alabama. Decatur, Alabama. Good old Decatur. So Mama's roots really are from Alabama. On one side. <laughs> On one side. Part of her. And the others is right here. Mm-hmm. Mama's already got the bells out. Must be close to eating time. Oh, the carrots. And all the carrots ain't going to get done. I knew it was going to be my fault. Yeah. You ain't going to let me play. The comments go by so fast it's hard to keep up. It is. I've heard the same thing from many folks, unless you have someone watch it. That's the truth, Carrie. Uh, if you're just doing it like me and Mama, this, you know, we don't have a staff. We have some people who help us some on answering questions. But as far as the the uh, DMs and all that, or the PMs, those are just me. Mama don't even answer those. She reads them sometimes and tells me if she sees one, but most time it's just me on those. And then we don't have anyone really on here. Um, sometimes uh, Nola or Donut will be on here and they will answer your questions. But as far as me sitting here reading them, it's just me and they go very quickly and it's harder to keep up than you would think. Never see me or comments. Okay, love you both. Jo Joan... Uh, Calibro it says never see me or comment it's okay love you both well Joan here I have seen you too <laughs> hello John and Mama from Erie North Carolina hey Robin beans and taters and cornbread that's what's for supper Charlotte that sounds good hello John and Mama from East Tennessee are you from are you from East Tennessee Lisa Malico love watching well thank you Well, thank you, Paula and Steve Swanson. I'm glad that you feel that way. So they can't get through the day without watching this. It's going to... What? Joyce, did you say the S word? Not snow. In West Virginia, you're our neighbor. Hey. Am I getting snow, Joyce, and just don't know it yet? <laughs> yeah, the lady up in the dumpster said that we're getting snow tonight. Sleet or snow or something tonight. Joyce, see what you started? Now Mama says we're getting it. Sleet and snow, Mom. Said, yeah, sleet would probably come and snow and stuff. Said they wasn't. This is what happens when you don't watch the news and you refuse to look because you're afraid of what you'll see. Uh, John, have you and Mama ever cooked with liquid hickory smoke? 
Brandy, I like it. Mama hates it. I don't you Mama don't like anything smoky, even real smoke. Like if you smoke it in a smoker, Mama's not a fan. Uh, and uh, so I will use liquid smoke sometimes if I do a separate pot. And I have some liquid smoke, but and if I go out on the grill sometimes I will uh, use liquid smoke. But Mama don't care for smoke of any kind. What do you say, Mama? That's that old smoky flavor. Yeah. I don't care for it. I took her to a really nice, well, it was a, it was a, wasn't a nice place. It was just really good food. It was a place um, that they were famous for their smoke barbecue and stuff. And uh, I, said, I said, Mama, this potato, this is so good with barbecue. And I said, hey, I like it because I figured it was a baked potato with barbecue and all this good stuff. And I said, I like it, Mama. And she said, well... I like it, but I could do that that it was smoky stuff. <laughs> you mean the barbecue? <laughs> the whole point of coming here? Uh, it tastes like smoke instead of the food. I don't Mama, like it's that. a good smoke. It's a good smoke. Yeah. Hello, John and Mama. Baby Maggie, love you all. Love Jackie and baby Maggie. Um, Jackie Miller, thank you. Baby Maggie is not happy. It's cold. Thank you. It's cold, and Maggie's not a fan of that. She just don't like it. Paulette, thank you for those stars. Thank you all for those stars. Y'all are so kind. Now, tomorrow, we're going to use some of that star money, and we are going to give away some cookbooks, 6 o'clock here tomorrow evening, um, in, uh, for appreciation gifts for you all. That's what we've decided would be a good thing to do with star money. Uh, that way, we can buy them from the church, and then this helps the church out, and then we can give them to you all as appreciation gifts. I bet it smells good there with Mama's good cooking. It does, Kathy. It smells like onions and carrots and beef stew simmering. It already has got the kitchen smell. Wonderful. I don't like smoked food either, Barbara. You and Mama could eat together. Yeah. Hi, John and Mama. Y'all got a bread pudding uh, using Texas Roadhouse Rose. Oh, that would be good. We don't have a recipe for it, but that would be good. Uh, that Those comments have went crazy all of a sudden. They're going fast. Joanne, thank you for those stars. Crystal, Hale says, hey, John and Mama, how are you? Karen, how are you? Folks, this is all we're going to do tonight, is have a little bit of beef stew. Mama, should carry it down? I don't know. We'll eat them. As long as they don't crunch bad carrots. We'll I can eat a raw carrot, Mama. Surely I can eat it if it's warm. Uh, somebody else said that was with you, Mama. They don't like that smoke. Oh. John, we are getting snow. Oh, West Virginia. Mary Kid. I love liquid smoke. I do too, Mary. I like it. Man, I can't see the rest of your comment. You said snow in West Virginia. If you all get it in West Virginia, you all are very close to us. I bet you will get us a little dab of it, too. Looking forward to receiving my cookbook soon. Kathleen uh, Mueller, we, Mama's Comp Up as of today, unless you received it today. Bonnie Thanker, how are you? Uh, don't like liquid smoke either. And we've got about a half a box left. No, to, we have... Won't have any after I feel this last bit. Okay, Mama says when she feels what she picked up today, that'll probably do this last box we had. But we've got another box, and they told me it would be here around the 16th of April. So there will be a lag a week or so, maybe. Um, but if we've got enough to fill up into what we are have now, and you all mail yours in, that'll be about another week. Because it takes us about a week to get it from some of y'all. And then it should just be a week or so's uh, gap in there. Sorry about the gap. Mama told me to order books one week and I order them the next week. But I really think we should order them a couple weeks ahead. Um, well, they want many coming and we had like a burst of we had several, several things. Uh, we had two boxes and usually we order... I went to the post office and I had like 30 In a row. orders all at one time. So yeah. that that kind of that jumped it up. That is sad. But anyhow, it's it's not a perfect science. 
but we'll have them real soon. I adore smoked meats, Wendy. I I prefer natural. Uh, I've got a friend who smokes stuff. Um, he's got a smoker, and uh, he's all the time smoking good stuff. And I've I've been on to him for uh, smoked macaroni and cheese. I hear it's wonderful. I like to smoke. Put it in there in a casserole dish, and you smoke it in your smoker. I just think that smoked cheese would be good. Becky Moore, 84 degrees in in Gatesville, Texas. You all are, that's a little warm, really, for me, but that's better than 40, I think. Sunny and 60 in uh, Antigua. Uh, uh, okay. I can't make it for the last part of it. Hey, Teresa. Hey, he'll, if you ordered it, it's gone. We, they're out. All cookbooks are out except what we received today. John and Mama, let's make prime rib for Easter. Brandy. Oh, Brandy Clark Morton. I think we've got ham on the menu. Prime rib would be good. Um, my birthday is March 30th. Uh, Michelle Wilkinson, you are one day after me. Happy. Happy birthday to Michelle. Everybody send us some hearts for Michelle. Her birthday's coming up. And we may not get the opportunity on the 30th. Brenda Norman. Hey, Debbie. Thank you for the stars, Bobby. Y'all are so kind. So, so kind. Um, Mom's getting ready to dump up the cornbread. And uh, we'll see how her pot's seasoned. Her kettle. Her, her uh, skillet. My skillet is super seasoned. Well, I don't know if you call it super seasoned or not, but it's old, and and this is not my original cornbread skillet because it's smaller than my. I had two that I've used for years and years. Oh, here's the camera moment. Oh, <laughs> I believe I'm. I'm gonna nail her down, my friend. Now, how would I take up the cornbread if you nail me down? Here's the Here's cornbread. the cornbread. Here's the big flip. There it is, folks. That's what I'm showing that skillet. That skillet don't look much different than that when it's cold. It's shiny. Now, it's got a little extra oil in it tonight, but a good cornbread skillet's going to be just as shiny, and you're going to get this kind of cornbread. When your skillet's just right and you heat it up, you're going to get that right there every time. And look at that. Now that is some golden deliciousness. Cornbread. Isn't that wonderful? We usually leave ours turned upside down. It's too hot for me to flip and show you, but the top's just as pretty. Um, but that is a good pound of cornbread. No stick, no mess, deliciousness. Isn't it, Mom? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I like butter on my... Mama likes butter. I like butter, too. I'll give you a get a sharp knife to take the cornbread. You don't want this one? I was going to let you put butter on it. Oh, yes, ma'am. I will do that. She's still the <laughs> carrots. So, when we cut our cornbread... How y'all cut your cornbread? Now, there's two ways of cutting cornbread in the South, anyway. A lot of folks just break it. You just reach in and break off the piece. A lot of folks cut it like squares. They'll cut probably, probably down the middle. I don't know, and they'll just cut it about that big. And then they'll grid it, and it'll be squares. Was you afraid I was gonna cut it wrong, Mama? Yeah, I, I heard you gasp. gasp. Mama has, I'll tell y'all about Mama's phobias in a minute here. Now, if I had cut that wrong, that cornbread, that would have been a major event right here. And she would have let me have it. Why don't you mess up that cornbread? Said, Mama, it's the same. It just cut different. If I had cut a square out of the middle of it, that would have been an ER visit. I it would have, that yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. You remember the time I cut that square out of that cake? I could have killed you. <laughs> it was Easter Sunday. <laughs> and everybody in the family knows how Mama is about everything because she picky. Um, 
And I, she made a cake, and it wasn't the cake. It wasn't like the uh, rabbit cake, and it wasn't like the uh, coconut cream cake. It was just a chocolate, I think it was a chocolate cake for the kids, actually, because it was in a nine by nine pan. Wasn't no big deal at all. So, I told those kids, I said, do you want to see Mama go crazy? Yeah, what are you going to do to her? I said, what's this? So I just, and, and I done it in, in a piece I was going to eat anyway. So, you know, instead of cutting it this way, you know, just the corner, I just turned it and then a catty corner cut and cut a square out and dipped it out. It didn't run the whole cake, just the corner. Mama sang, I said, Mama, you want some cake? Why did you do that? Those kids said, she is upset. <laughs> Mama, tell them about it. Tell them about it. Tell them about it, Mama. Tell them about how you got upset with my cornbread. There's about a proper my... way and a right way to do it. And as my daddy always said, if you can't do it right, just leave it alone. <laughs> That's kind of what she said Easter that time, but it was a lot louder and a lot longer. Her syllables were a lot longer. Yeah. If you can't do no better than that, leave it alone. Leave it alone and I'll cut you a piece of cake. But I tell you one thing, nobody ever cut cake wrong again, did they, Mama? No, them kids did. <laughs> I've done it for pure minutes because I knew I'd done it before and I knew what you would get. I knew Mama would not allow it. He always does that. Oh, not always, but a lot of times he'll cut something. Just a little. Pie off. or cake and mix Like a pie, you know, like it'll be cut perfectly. And I'll take and cut maybe just the, the pointed end off of a piece and put it on my plate. And she's like, you've been into that pie. This mommy didn't hurt it. It didn't change the integrity of the pie. And it still took, well, nobody wants that old pointless piece of pie. <laughs> Ain't that what you say, mama? Now they have to agree with me. Don't mess up. No, they food. don't either, mama. They're laughing at you. Presentation of food is 90%. They're laughing at you, mama. They're saying, no, ha, ha, ha. It says, it's round. You should cut it in triangles. <laughs> See. Who said that? Mary Kidd said that. Uh, Mama is my kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby. Uh, it says, I can't hear Mama. Nobody can. She's She tries not to be heard. I think I tell her all the time, <laughs> talk up, Mama. Talk up. You're not proud of... Torturing sweet mama, naughty naughty. Well, Andrew, every once in a while, yeah, I do. You're never too old for your mama to, uh, you I'll should you. smack <laughs> your hand. Even, even don't give her no ideas. It says, my homemade cornbread is better than Cracker Barrels. I bet it is, Robin. Hey, Bonnie, it says, John, did you ever have sausage cornbread? Uh, you just add brown mm. sausage and onion to Mexican cornbread recipe. Mm. No, Bonnie Thacker, but I plan on having it very soon. Thank you very much. Sausage and onions to Mexican cornbread? Oh, that sounds wonderful, Bonnie Thacker. Did you cook the onions first? I don't think so. Bonnie Mama's got questions. Do you cook them onions before you put them in? I don't think so. Debbie, that's the reason I've done it, just because it's funny. Martha, that's the reason I've done it. I don't ever really mess up food or nothing like that. But, you know, every once in a while, like, you know, like if this was a piece of pie and it was laying out there to be, i just chop it off like this and just eat that very tip piece and leave that piece. Oh, she gets off upset. Even the company ain't here. Quit messing in that pie. Look how you got that looking. It's the truth, Mama. But don't you think it should be cut right? If you're going to cut it squares, cut it all squares. It's See how right. upset she's getting just thinking. <laughs> just thinking about it. <laughs> Have y'all ever seen Mama's upset? No, I've never seen Well, That ain't my spoonful. That's all carrots. That's what's wrong with my eyes. I don't eat enough carrots. That's right, Mama. We went to the eye doctor yesterday. 
Mama will have the cutest little pair of glasses you ever seen in a week or two. Potatoes and meat, ma'am. Yeah, that's, that's juice. Juice, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You want more potatoes and meat? That's good enough for right now. That's all we get. That's it. We eat little batches like this, especially when we're eating big stew or something. We don't get a big bow usually because it just stays hot and you can't eat it anyway. Let's pray over this. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful meal. We thank you for these precious hands that prepared it, dear Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you would be with us and be with everyone watching, dear Lord. Remember all the prayer requests, those that are spoken and, and comments that are made and those that are not, dear Lord. We just pray that you lead, guide, and direct us in everything. Be with our nation. Be with our leaders, dear Lord. Watch over us all. Lead, guide, and direct us in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. And my mom will try these big old chunky carrots. They'll probably crunch. I like to taste them. I want to taste what I'm tasting. Mm. Mama, them carrots is as tender as your eyeball. No. Oh, they are. They're going to crunch to them. They're perfect. When you get one of those logs in there. <laughs> Mama, that's pretty big. And they're delicious. Now let's Ooh. try a little potato. When I make it, I want my potatoes big. I want my carrots big. And I want to kind of pick what I'm tasting. Your mama's right. When she goes to all the trouble of fixing it, don't demolish it. See there? Mama trying to teach you etiquette. Okay. That's right. Okay, she's been doing that my whole life. She's she's done good. Ha oh, ha, I Mama, you're that. easy to tease. That's why John <laughs> does it. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Karen Norman, that's the truth. Lisa Ann, hi, Mama and John from, um, is that Maine? It's too little, I can't read. I'm getting some new glasses too. And no, I'm not getting new glasses, I'm just getting more lenses. I'm too old for new glasses. <laughs> so I love cornbread and beans the best. I do too, Karen. I love beans. We get some beans in there. I'll probably eat tomorrow. It says, I'm glad Mama's getting glasses. She I'm squints glad. without them. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. She does. She squints. Um, I noticed that the other night. She does that. She'll, I said, Mama, you look mean. I'm just trying to sleep. <laughs> uh -uh. I have to focus real hard so I can see what it is. <laughs> This tastes delicious, Mama. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, this ain't nothing elaborate. This ain't nothing fancy for sure. But it is delicious. And it's you can start from scratch, get you some beef, put in some coffee, just a cup of coffee, a brewed coffee, and some water, a little bit of better than bouillon beef flavoring in there, and let that simmer, let that meat get good and tender, and then add them carrots and onions and uh, some uh, diced potatoes. you got a wonderful meal. Put you some cornbread with it. Mm, mm, mm. Mama, that carrot was so tender. I didn't even have to use my teeth. Oh, wow. You're supposed to chew your food. I did chew it. How did you not use your teeth? <laughs> I might have used one. <laughs> It is tender. It's good. And then, uh, do you all like your carrots and vegetables big or you want them all little? Some people do, some people don't. It says mayonnaise muffins. Have you made them? Mm -hmm. Kim, we have made mayonnaise biscuits. And uh, you mean mayonnaise with cornbread? We haven't, but I would. Beef pot pie with leftover roast. Now, Keith, are you talking about like a, a shepherd's pie? I've done that the or last a time. Or chicken pot pie. Or a chicken pot pie. She said with leftover roast. Uh, we did shepherd's pie not long ago. Enjoy the rest of your day, Liz Jones. You too. Love to put over cornbread. Yeah. I like that. Or I like to just dip it in it. Mm. Um, Sada salad. Oh yeah, Eunice. We'll be having that for Easter, I'm sure. 
Does it have to be brewed coffee? Kimberly Cleaver. I don't understand that question. Instant coffee is my Oh, instant? I don't think instant. Never used instant. Uh, brewed coffee, I'm just meaning whatever's in your coffee pot, like a drip. Um, is that what you're asking me? Like it, you know, like it's just you make a pot of coffee for the morning, and if you have a cup or two left, you can use it to cook your beef with, and it just acts as a tenderizer. It doesn't change the flavor to taste like coffee, but it does change the meat, and it tenderizes it because of the acid in the coffee. Uh, and it, it gives it some flavor, I guess, mm -hmm. but it's not a coffee flavor. And you, it's not like, oh, I don't like coffee, I wouldn't like it. Uh, John, you are a twin of my grandson, but an older version of him. Well, Carol Lynn, I didn't know you had such a good looking grandson. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> that's not funny. Carol, did you hear her laughing at me? Tell him I said hello. But then I pinto bean and cornbread. <laughs> Yum. Deborah, I love pinto beans and cornbread with chow chow and onion. I like my carrots and potatoes where I can see them in my stew. Me too, Susan. I want I want the all the flavors. Mayo on cornbread, not butter. Is that what you're saying, Sherry? I would eat that. Mm -mm. Mama wouldn't. I love Mama's giggles. Well, <laughs> Joyce Moyer, you might not like me if it's directed at you. Listen to her giggling. Melissa Whitaker, I saw a flag by my name. What does that mean? Huh. There is a flag by your name, Melissa. And there is a little heart or diamond. The diamond, I think, means you're a top person. What does the flag mean? Jenny, uh, you got one too. The, Facebook came out with a whole bunch. You can go on and look it up. What are the symbols or badges, I think they call them. There, somebody has a little, I can't hardly see them. They're really small. That looks like a little clock by somebody. Paula, there's a flag. Melissa, I don't think it's anything bad because everybody's got them. Some people have stars and little claps and little diamonds and all that good stuff. So I think it's just a part of the badge system they came up with. I put coffee in my Sloppy Joe's and yeah, I did too. Sloppy Joe's, chili, about any beef. Well, there's no beef that I fix that I don't put a little coffee in. Mama loved that comment. Um, there's no coffee, or no, no coffee. There's no beef. I, I don't put it in chicken as much, but I do sometimes. And I put it in pork. So in beef and in pork, I always put a cup, two cups of coffee, whatever I have. Uh, John, do you still have any church cookbooks available to purchase? We will in April. Um, Madeline Myers, we do have uh, a few. And Mama says she thinks she'll be out of this order on the one she has today that she picked up from the post office today. But we have some coming in two weeks, uh, April the 16th or whatever. And sometimes I get here early. I've had them order for about a month. So sometimes I get here early. So there may be a gap of a few days, but it won't be anything major. Last time it was a month or something. That drove Mama crazy. But what she does, I'll tell you what Mama's little trick is. Mama, you okay? <laughs> she grabbed that napkin. I thought it was something was wrong. Mama, this is what Mama does. <coughs> I froze y'all up. Um, I'm craving your mashed potato salad. Never had it, but it sounds good. It is, mashed potato salad is delicious. I made it the other night with leftovers. Uh, what Mama does is when she, when we're in a gap between books, she goes to the post office just like always. She comes home, she gets the envelope, she opens them up, she sorts them, she writes the addresses on the envelopes, she puts the return label on them, she gets them ready to mail. She stacks them up, we go through them in order. When the books do arrive, she can fill a bunch of orders 
And sometimes I have sent her to 90 something books. I took a little over like 121 t- times. When, we was, when there was such a gap. To the post office and I don't think they appreciated that too good. That was I, a lot. She don't try to do that to them. I don't do that no more. Um, but she just keeps right on uh, filling the orders with the envelopes and everything. So when the orders, when we do get the books, she just stuffs them, seals them, and takes them to the post office within a day or two. The one time when she did take a lot like that, it was, pretty, it took a long time. Um, <coughs> so she does that and she just sends them right on. So there's not a lag in really shipping them too much because mm-hmm. she's very organized with them. Says, hello, John and Mom from California. Well, I bet you have beautiful weather. Good old California. Flag is a milestone follower. You can click on the badge and it will tell you. Now, see, that's the reason Brenda uh, has, uh, has her. That's the reason I like having smart friends like you. Because when I don't know something, Somebody will know it, and you knew that. Thank you so much. So it's a milestone follower, which it means you probably have been here a while, but not been here as long as somebody else, or you're not um, uh, been on there since they have. Maybe it's so many weeks, months, or so many shows you have to be on. I don't know. I don't know any of the rules. Ruby slipper cake looks so good. Copy time with John and Mama. Cynthia Jones, that keg is one piece or two left. And we didn't need it. I always shared it. We took the neighbor's son. I took it to work today. Um, uh, It's been good. It was a good, good keg. It's 68 degrees here today, Kathy. I don't know where you are, but 68 is pretty warm. That's what we we had yesterday. Thank you, Miss Kathy. Folks, that's all we have. We're just gonna eat these old hard carrots that mama, they're not hard at all. I didn't think I'd ever get done. <coughs> they're delicious, mama. What are you coughing so much for, mama? What did you get, <coughs> cornbread? <coughs> I was gonna go, but if I go now, people will be afraid there's something wrong with you, mama. I'm are you really? Yeah, the crumbles are going down the right way, you know, the cornbread. Mama has that problem with cornbread <coughs> sometimes. And you know what she didn't do today? What didn't you do, Mama? I don't know. To the cornbread. I put flour in it. Did you? Yes, I did. Did y'all see her put flour in that cornbread? In a yellow cup. Go back and watch it. I put it back <laughs> Mama thinks she's working on a football team. (laughs) Go to the replay. (laughs) Mama says she put flour in there. I figured she hadn't. If you put flour in your cornbread, they say it won't you won't get choked on it if you're if you tend to get choked on cornbread. I don't know. But mama put cornbread in or flour in tonight. I put a little, not a whole lot. You didn't put enough, mama. Mama's fine. We're fine. We're blessed. <laughs> we won't be back on to bother y'all tonight because it's 7 o'clock. But sometimes it's bedtime we're, almost. Sometimes we're on here this late getting started. Now that's ridiculous for us. But you know what? It's still daylight here even if it is cold. Mm. It's dropped another degree, I believe. It's down to 45, I think. Mm. But it's still daylight. <coughs> Spring is coming. You know what else happened this week here? Need to look to work. The Forsythias blew up. They're beautiful. They're golden, beautiful. <laughs> the 70 degrees, the Forsythias, the March bells, those little yellow flowers that I talk about all the time that tell me it's a bush more than a flower. That tells me, John, hang in there. Tomato time is coming. <coughs> Mom. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. 
Don't eat no more cornbread, Mom. Stop that cornbread and juice. It's probably not had enough water, Mom. Not for you. I'm drinking water for supper. You are doing good. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm telling you, this little jug right here, <laughs> this little Tupperware pitcher, we have water in the refrigerator, door, and all that good stuff, but we keep this right there in the front of the refrigerator. And when you open the refrigerator and you're thirsty, it just looks good. And sometimes we put lemons in it, but we don't leave the rind in it overnight. And it just looks good. And it has, now this I fill up about every day. And Mama has drunk some today, looks like. No. This I is just ours tonight. I'll be honest, I didn't drink. I didn't drink none today, she said. <laughs> but it just keeps us wanting more water, or it does me. I'll open the door sometime and I think, oh, that water looks so good. Now, Mama, do you ever do that? You say, boy, that water looks so good. I look for Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know hope for me. On a totally separate note, if y'all know a man who would like to sit with an elderly woman <laughs> and make sure she gets her water every day. I'm joking. I can move it aside and reach around it and get a Coke. <laughs> so, Mama, put that water right there in the front. I know it's in my way. Can you move it to the side? <laughs> I've been mean, Ollie. I better get off from here. You have been mean, Mama. You've treated me rough in front of my friends. Yeah, I've been mean. I might have to ask forgiveness. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. No, you <laughs> can't. <laughs> Folks, we're going to get out from here before we embarrass ourselves in front of the whole family. My and face is turning red. That's where you've been coughing, Mama. That cornbread about took you out. I better not try milk and bread for a little bit. No. <clears throat> Mama's not allowed to drink milk and bread unless I'm home. That's a true statement. Um, I tell her, don't you drink milk, don't you eat milk and bread if I'm not home. I want to be here in case you get choked on down. Dogwood trees are beautiful, y'all, yep. and Paul, they're blooming right now. Um, downtown, I've seen someone that's coming home, and uh, I guess we'll call this Dogwood Winter until we know better. But I think that's what this is, because they are blooming. Uh, thank you, Miss Bonnie Thacker. We love you all, too. Uh, Mama is choking, Tiffany said. She's, thank you, Vicky, for those stars. Um, no, she's not choking, Vicky. She got strangled on a little bit of cornbread and water. And, uh, but she's fine. She's breathing and <laughs> saying mean things to me. And mean things. I made some pink lemonade today. Oh, it's time, isn't it, Lynn? I love pink lemonade. Love it. Oh, Let me tell you all a little recipe. He loved it better than anything, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He loved pink lemonade. Let me tell you all a really <laughs> good recipe that I just love. Um, make your favorite sweet tea, whether it's you alls or Lipton's or whatever your favorite is. We're not sponsored by Lipton or y'all, so it don't matter to me. Or what's that other one? Lucy Ann. Lucy especially great for iced tea. Make your favorite tea, sweet tea. I guess you could do it unsweet. I never did. Make your favorite sweet tea and leave about, well, enough room. <clears throat> And get you some Country Time Lemonade or Minute Maid Lemonade frozen. Just that can of frozen. Take that off and drop that down in your gallon of tea. Put that in the refrigerator. And it's wonderful for parties or just to enjoy. It's lemonade iced tea. It's wonderful. And that's the whole recipe. It's sweet tea and a can of frozen lemonade. It, it gives it a different flavor than uh, just add lemon, and uh, but it's delicious, and it's a good summertime treat. I always look forward to that in the summer, is having at least a couple or three runs of that. And uh, another thing I'm looking forward to is Mama's wonderful. Well, hello, Cynthia Jones, how are you? Cynthia, all I can see is a smiley face. You may have said something like that, but see more, don't let me see more. Um, Mama's lemonade. Mm. It's good. Uh, is Redbud winter according to news? Oh, is it? 
Well, Redbeds bloomed last week when it was cold, and I called last week's winner a Redbud winner. You've messed up the winners. Oh, I've messed up the winners. Love dogwood trees. I do too, uh, Lorraine. I hope to go over some of the uh, history of the lock dogwood uh, when they get in full bloom. When they kind of get a hold of a bloom, maybe we can talk about the dogwood and, and the, what it signifies and uh, how it looks. It's called Arnold Palmer. Victoria, is that what I'm talking about? Lemonade nice tea? Huh. Arnold Palmer drink. Someone else said that. Is that what it is? Is, I, is Arnold Palmer drink not an alcoholic drink? Huh. Arnold Palmer sweet tea and lemonade. Carolyn Johnson. Oh, I'll be. Huh. Thank you all for educating me. I just, we've had it for years. We call it lemonade iced tea. <laughs> This is called Arnold Palmer. I think you all are right. A lot of you are saying that. <laughs> Tetley. Oh, uh, yeah, Tetley's a brand. How are y'all? John and Mama. So happy to see y'all. Wilma, Wilma Kennedy. Thank you. Um, try y'all sweet tea. I have tried it, and we like it. We had some last week. Uh, the people from, I guess the people from y'all sent it, didn't they, Mama? I think so. They sent us a thing of regular and a thing of decaf. I've seen a lot of other people making it, so I'm sure they've just they're sending it around. This is they sell Arnold Arnold Palmer in cans. Now I've heard of Arnold Palmer drinks my whole adult life, but I really didn't know it was just lemonade and tea together. Yes, it is. Or half and half. Okay. Claudia, Kendall. So Arnold Palmer is half and half. Y'all, sweet tea is so good. Yeah, I liked it. It was good. Yes, it's an Arnold Palmer, non-alcoholic. Okay, good. Okay, folks, let me tell you what this Arnold Palmer recipe. <laughs> uh, it's good. So at least y'all know about it. Um, here in... Love the dogwood. Me too, Pat. Uh, here in downtown Oswego, we just got lemonade iced tea. But it sure is good. And and I guess for now, I'm call it Arnold Palmer. Nova Scotia, Canada, Debbie. Uh, hello, John and Mama. Mama mm -hmm. loves... Mama loves Nova Scotia. She's just up there right before COVID. Orange juice and tea. Now, Kim Stewart, we have that a lot here. Yeah. Well, let me think of it. We have fresh squeezed oranges in our sweet tea. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever poured <coughs> frozen orange. <coughs> well, then we do the frozen orange juice in. <coughs> yes, tea and lemonade is called the Arnold Palmer. Mama, did you know that? No. I sort of say, if you knew that, it didn't teach me that. I don't do any mixed drinks or anything. I didn't really know. <coughs> Uh, ready for homemade ice cream. How about y'all? Yeah, yeah, Kathy, I am. You know, I had that snow cream the first time in my life. Oh, it wasn't. The reason I pointed to her knew she was going to say that, but I do not ever remember having it. But Mama said we had it when I was a child. And, um... I'm going to say if Wendell remembers. I bet he do. Yep, it's an Arnold Palmer. I'm convinced, folks. Thank you all for enlightening me on that. I really didn't know what an Arnold Palmer was. I've heard on TV shows people order that, but I thought it was just maybe a mixed drink. If you're not a drink connoisseur, you don't know all those things. Um, but basically, it's what we call it. It's just lemonade iced tea. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, it's good. So y'all try that sometime. Half and half is tea and lemonade. Half out, half cut is half. Sweet and half unsweet tea. Wait a minute, Kim. I think I need to read that again. Half and half is tea and lemonade. Half cut is half sweet and half unsweet. So that's what you call it, half cut. Okay. Half cut. I guess that's what it means when you want half lemon, half sweet and half <clears throat> unsweet. I travel with a lady. She would get when she ordered tea. She asked for it to be. Half and half that way. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all for those stars. Y'all are so sweet. 
Okay, one more time and I'm going to go. So tomorrow at 6 o'clock, we'll probably see y'all before then. But if we don't, 6 p.m. tomorrow, Lord willing, we're going to make macaroni and salad mama style. And it's going to be a cook-along, so y'all get your ingredients, which is elbow macaroni, a couple, three, four boiled eggs. If you're making a big old pile of it, maybe you need six boiled eggs. Mayonnaise, mustard, just a dab, a little bit of sugar, and some sweet pickle relish. Now, any of those ingredients, salt and pepper, salt and pepper <coughs> any of those ingredients, you're welcome to change, and you can make... <coughs> potato salad if you want to or you can make coleslaw or <coughs> you can make anything you want to while we're making that but that's what our cook along is going to be tomorrow and we'll meet here at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening and we will fix that and have my a little my sister asked me was I going to make mommy's macaroni salad and you said yes that's all the kind of that's all the kind of <laughs> so <coughs> this is my Miles from Mississippi macaroni salad Mississippi, Alabama. I mean, Alabama. <laughs> Alabama. I think, what made me think of Mississippi? Somebody <clears throat> asked me again today. Kendall, Mama's great niece, has been wanting us to make Mississippi pot roast. And I thought, we could have made that today, but we didn't. And it's got the peppercorns and stuff in it. I do want to try it. And everybody tells me how good it is. And one of my friends mentioned it to me today. He said, have you made the I said, oh, everybody's talking about that Mississippi pot roast. I got to try it. So I am going to make an effort to get the next time we get a good roast deal. And we're going to try Mississippi Pot Roast on here and just see, <coughs> see if y'all like it. Maybe y'all do. Some of y'all done tell me you did. And we're going to try it out and see. Just to see. We could on this one if I don't know what it was. Yeah. Kendall gave us the recipe. I'll have to make sure. Yeah, Folks, we're going to say goodnight. We're going to say, y'all, find you some good to eat. Make you some memories. Show up tomorrow night at 6 o'clock anyway. We'll have a cook along. We're going to give away some cookbooks. And we are going to uh, have a good time. Now, in the morning, we may come on in the morning. You know, sometimes on Saturdays, we do. Uh, it's so cold. I don't think there'll be no nursery visits this weekend. We need to get to the nursery and get some plants. But, whoo, it's just they need to stay in that greenhouse for another week here. But we're going to say have a good night. Make you some memories. Enjoy yourself. Have a great day tomorrow, no matter what the weather is. If it's cold, build a fire and bundle up and have some soup. If it's warm, get out there and enjoy it. Whatever your weather is, you enjoy it. And we're going to say good night and you all have a great one. Say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. God bless you and Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.